devil, Allah, which is Muhammad, says in Quran, chapter 4, verse 95, not equal are those believers remaining at home and the mujahideen who strive and fight in the cause of Allah with the wealth and the lives. This is actually for you. Not equal are those believers remaining at home and the mujahideen who, who strive and fight. Allah had given his absolutely true statement for all times and everyone who hadn't been able to join jihad. And it's like a very stupid understanding of morality. Uh, as I mentioned, each each kind of moral command has a certain context, has certain kinds of conditions. So when Allah commands to fight uh, in the Quran, that doesn't mean Muslims are constantly fighting and constantly killing and constantly engaged in jihad and ghazawat and all of this. Okay, that That's a very mentally handicapped understanding of morality in general. There are conditions... Right? And even in the life of the Prophet وسلم, sometimes he was fighting, sometimes he was not. Sometimes the uh, Ummah was in Mecca. They weren't fighting when they were in Medina. They were fighting other times. Th it's just condition based. Okay, uh, This is important to understand about all morality. But this is just a cartoon caricature that Harris wants to present, but it's a straw man. Uh, for right or wrong reason, would have been condemned to eternal hellfire or at least social humiliation. But luckily, by sheer coincidence, a blind man happened to be sitting there who overhears Muhammad dictating this verse to his scribe, and he says, but, oh, Prophet, w w what about me? If I was capable, then I would have joined the jihad. Then this is so comical. Muhammad pretends, uh, I'm getting another revelation, and adds the phrase, other than the disabled. This whole story is written in Timothy 3033. Now, what kind of an all-knowing entity, when giving his final word for all times, forgets such a detail? This is not an isolated incident. There's another hilarious story from the 7th century. <laughs> this is, again, he's have, he has a problem with Asbab and Nuzul, the conditions of revelation. And he's saying, oh, okay, well, this seems so convenient. Oh, how what a convenient... This kind of argument is, again, argument in bad faith. You are trying to raise these points that it's not like a logical argument it's not like a logical point that you're making all that he's saying oh how convenient that revelation came at this time you know you can say that about anything you can say that about any aspect of islam and any aspect of any religion okay you can always project bad intentions or project dishonesty project hypocrisy you can always make these kinds of project projections and in insinuate and convey and this is actually a big strategy of a lot of uh, Christian missionary work because these Christian missionaries the previous generations they poured through hadith and they poured through the Quran and they wanted to raise these kinds of doubts but it's it's like a very low level <laughs> Uh, of just implication like oh how convenient that the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam had so many wives how convenient that the rules of allah allow that how convenient like this is you can say that about anything that anyone does and that doesn't constitute a moral argument you can't scrutinize you can scrutinize the content of uh, the moral principle like you can say having multiple wives is immoral polygamy polygyny is immoral it's barbaric or whatever these people will say fine we can evaluate that and we can have a conversation or a debate on that point but that's not what harris is saying he's saying oh how convenient that he's just he's like a liar the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is a liar and he's setting he's saying things that will benefit him. Okay, what's your proof of that? <laughs> what is what is the proof? You're just begging the question that he, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is a liar. You've begged the question. Begging the question means you've assumed what you want to prove. You've assumed what you want to conclude. Like a, a premise of your argument is found buried. Uh, or the, your conclusion is buried in one of the premises. So his conclusion is that Islam is false. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is a liar. He's a, he's a false prophet. That's the conclusion. But he assumes it with this kind of statement. The implication, like, oh, how convenient. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is clearly lying for his own benefit. He's taking, you know, multiple wives. Or, oh, he's saying, like, this kind of revelation came. This... This, uh, at this time, 
with the asbab and nuzul the conditions of revelation this is a low iq argument it's not it's actually a fallacy because it's begging the question it's begging the question evaluate the content the principle the moral principle and we can have a debate about that but there's no way that i can refute this kind of oh okay how convenient i can't refute that because your whole pr starting premise is that he's a liar all I can say is that I, all I can say is that no, he's not a liar. There's nothing that he, the Prophet wasallam, or Jesus Christ, or Abraham, or Moses, or Ganesha, did that can't be questioned in the same kind of way in bad faith. So, like for example, I criticize a Muslim skeptic criticizes. You know, our scholarly team with Mufti Abdullah Mullah, may Allah bless and preserve him, is writing all these amazing articles on Hinduism. But what <laughs> Mufti Abdullah is doing is he's saying, like, hey, look at this Hindu god and look at what this Hindu god is depicted of as doing in the Hindu scripture. And isn't that crazy? <laughs> isn't that shocking or isn't that immoral? And you can evaluate that. But that's not what Harris is doing with these kind of, oh, it's so convenient. This is an argumentative fallacy, and it's just eye-rolling type of argument. You're arguing in bad faith. It's begging the question. It's, and you're also just plagiarizing all of these uh, Christian missionaries from 50 years ago, 75 years ago. Uh, and their, their arguments on this level have not advanced. It's just the same thing having a lot of fun in the desert. For example, when Allah was explaining in Quran 2, chapter 2, verse 187, how you should fast in the month of Ramadan. He tries to be poetic and didn't realize how much confusion it would create later on. He said, eat until the white thread becomes distinguishable from the black thread. So, so those geniuses over there started putting white and black th threads on their legs and they would eat until it's bright enough that they could tell them apart. Allah was like, Jesus. <laughs> and then he added the word al-fajr, meaning dawn. Now, this story is also written in Bukhari 4,511. Did the all-knowing God not know this? You would be forgiven if a man made the st ma ma makes that statement, because yes, he might not have anticipated it, but an all-knowing God must have known this. These are very basics. Allah was making um, even a moderately skilled author like Hakikaju would probably not make that mistake, because we know when we write something, we anticipate how the other side might interpret it or how they will counteract it. This happens in our case all the time, because we don't claim that we know everything. We write a solution, we do our best, and when a situation arises, we adapt and change accordingly. But the claim of, of all the knowledge doesn't have this luxury. This all-knowing God is either a cunning liar or not so wise, as he says in Quran 109.6. For you is your religion, for me is mine. If you took it on face value, you'd be like, okay, that's a reasonable... All right, before he gets into that... Um... Again, this is a stupid argument um, when he's talking about the different circumstances of revelation. A lot of these atheists, they think that they understand what wisdom is and they think that they have all these arbitrary standards of how God should have revealed revelation. How should Allah have revealed the Quran? Why did he have this verse and then that verse? And then what, why is this abrogated? Why is that mansukh? So, so on and so forth. The way that Allah decides to reveal his final revelation is beyond your rationality, you as a, as a low IQ person. But he, he's not, it's not going to be up to your standards because certain things might even beyond, be beyond rationality or beyond human understanding itself. Like why, for example, um, the prayers for Maghrib prayer are three rakat. And Fajr are only two. Thor is four. Uh, Asr is four. Why? Why those specific numbers? Is that something that we could find rational reasons for, or like practical reasons for, or pragmatic reasons for? No, there are certain things that are not within the domain of uh, practical reason. Any any kind of law is like that, actually. Like, why is why are um, uh, let's say traffic lights. Why does green mean go and red mean stop? Is there a reason for it? Is there a practical reason for it? Is it arbitrary? Now I'm not saying that anything that God does, that Allah does is arbitrary because we don't 
disrespect Allah or we don't say such things about Allah. But there are certain aspects of any legal system that are not, you know, there's not necessarily a practical reason for for them. Uh, but the point that I'm trying to make beyond that is that certain things are not rationally scrutable about certain details. Like why was this verse revealed at this particular time as opposed to this verse? You can speculate all day. You can speculate for an entire lifetime. But what does that actually add? Like, wh why would you even bother with that kind of speculation when it's not something that you can reach a conclusion for? Now, I can give general wisdoms why Allah revealed, like, why you can ask, why didn't Allah reveal just a textbook of life, like a manual for life, and just put it in on a mountain somewhere? And, or put it on, like, some satellite and broadcast it throughout the world and why didn't God do this and why didn't God do that and these kinds of questions are endless like you can again speculate and come up with reasons why one is better than the other and someone who's clever like some of these clever atheists they're actually they've gotten pretty good at that where they will just cite like oh it would have been better if he if God had done this but since he didn't do that that means God is stupid which means God doesn't exist this is, again, a low IQ kind of argument because you can bring these kinds of reasons for anything. You can point out the, a negative aspect for anything. But, if you, but then that can be responded to and you can bring out a fuller picture. And you can say that, for example, with Revelation, that God wanted to, that Allah is revealing the Quran in the midst of people's lives. And so certain verses are coming down when they're the most relevant to the, the first community of believing Muslims with the Prophet ﷺ. And so that will affect them, that will impact them to a much greater degree. They'll have a much deeper spiritual and moral and sociological impact on them, the, the early community, which will be that much stronger to be able to propagate the religion and to strongly stick to the religion, to uh, live by it and implement it, which will reverberate through the centuries and to the millennia, through the millennia. And you have this Muslim empire, this Muslim community, this ummah that has brought so much good to the entire globe, to the entire world, to the entire human history, that's even acknowledged by non-Muslims. And this is the wisdom of re revelation, the Quran coming in this specific kind of way. So these are wisdoms that people can reflect on. If you don't care about truth, you don't care about deeper spiritual meaning, deeper beauty, then you're not going, that's a choice that you can make, but it means spiritual death. It means you won't be able to see the wisdom and, and you make a fool of yourself as Harris has done. But when they came to power, everyone had to either convert to Islam or be exiled. In the Quran chapter 2 verse 62, Allah in his all wisdom says Jews, Christian and Sapiens can go to heaven, need not to worry. But when Muhammad realizes he can achieve a lot more, he abrogates it and says in the Quran 385, as only Muslims can go to Jannah, non-Muslims will be the losers. Moreover, how many other verses there are where not only ordinary people, but learning, learned scholars of Islam disagree with each other, but they don't have the luxury of a prophet running around who could instantly get a text message from Allah, like in the case of a blind man, who could tell us, oh, no, 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 this is not what I meant, this is what I meant. And Allah knew this problem. This is why in Quran chapter 5 verse 19 he said, I am sending you another prophet so you don't complain where is our prophet. Well, I'm still complaining. Where's our prophet, Allah? Well, we need another prophet too because there is so much confusion in the understanding, in understanding Allah's verses, like how much is too much life beating, for example. Yeah, there's no confusion. <laughs> the Islamic tradition has been preserved. There's no other religion that has preserved its, uh, the texts, like the original revealed texts, um, the original revelation. Um, there's no other religion uh, like Islam. Judaism, so many distortions have come into their text. So many problems have come into their uh, interpretation of their text with rabbinic Judaism, Orthodox rabbinic Judaism. Uh, we, <laughs> that's actually a video that's coming out, inshallah, with Genius of Islam, episode three. Uh, you'll learn a lot of things about Judaism. Uh, in that video and Hinduism and Christianity 
but Islamic texts, the Quran, the preservation of the Quran, the preservation of Hadith, it's nothing like anything else. No other religion, Hinduism, <laughs> like they don't even know, Hindus don't even know who are the authors of some of their texts, some of their sacred scriptures. They don't even know the author. They can't even pinpoint a specific date or a specific century. Like, oh, within these few centuries, the text might have been written by someone. We don't know. We have some uh, guesses, but we can't tell for sure. Islam is not like this. Everything has been carbon dated, everything, or radio carbon dated. Everything has uh, manuscripts uh, have been dated to within very close to the Prophet Sallallahu life. And this is academically recognized. That level of preservation, even some of the, even though some of these modernists and some of these uh, Christian apologetics, apologists will try to poke holes and will try to say, oh, see, there's a problem here, or there's a problem here. All nonsense arguments, all, all garbage. Uh, they're not consistent in their standards because if you want to try to poke holes or ha raise objections to the preservation of the Islamic texts and revelation, uh, apply that same standard to your religious books. Apply that same standard to your uh, Bible, the New Testament or the Old Testament, and it's going to be very apparent that there's no comparison. There's no competition, actually.